Good morning. It is Jane. Um, I hope everybody had a great Merry Christmas. I did get a few cards and letters from you folks, and I want to thank you for those things. I didn't share them. I just wasn't sure if it was okay to share them. But um, thank you. It did help, you know, with the, with the holiday season. Because it's, I'll be honest, it's still kind of blue, you know, those kind of things. Um, but anyway... I had a pretty good Merry Christmas. My um, my son did come up to visit from Raleigh, so we had a great little visit, and we did a few things here in town and that kind of fun, you know, stuff, and just had a good time chit-chatting and, and talking. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what we've done. Let me get the cat out of here. Cat's trying to get into nonsense that's ticking me off and making me nuts. She thinks she's helping. Um, maybe she's trying to learn to crochet. I don't know. All right. I have don't have any finished items. I have gotten about that far on my blush shawl. Um, still doing the exercises for the hand and whatnot. And that will take some time. And this cat is being super ornery. Come here. Come here. She's after something that is down on the floor, and um, I'm trying to keep her away from it. The only other thing I did do is I did work a little bit on my spring shawl, um, my spring shawl that I am working on getting another sample finished so that I can do a tutorial on it later on, and um, that is my own pattern. So I am working trying to get that finished as well um, as a few other things you know in the house that kind of thing that is basically it um, for all that I have done the only thing that I thought I would tell you about is we did finish the English Standard Version reading of the Bible I did finish filming those I do film them ahead of time because otherwise it can't keep up um, and I believe January the 10th, we will start with the American Standard Bible with the Apocrypha. Um, we will do a reading plan that is basically chronological as well, but it is, it is going to include the Apocrypha in it. Um, and for those of you that don't know what the Apocrypha is, it used to be a set of books that were included in the Bible, but scholars determined that it was not of divine authoritative um, works, so they removed it from the Bible at some point. However, it does give you a history of what happens um, between the time, you know, after Jeremiah, Isaiah, those kind of things, in between when the apostles happened and John the Baptist. You do see a little bit of history of that period of time, so, and um, I have read the Apocrypha through once before, but I thought it would be interesting to add it in to the Bible readings. Um, I will leave a link down below, and you'll have to scroll down below, hit the more um, underneath the video, and you should be able to scroll down and, and find the link for that if you do want to listen to those readings. Um, those are on a different channel completely. It is Daily Bible Readings with Jane. Um, just because I felt there are a lot of people that don't care to listen to the Bible readings. So, you know, why keep putting them out on Scraptastic Yarns when I could just do another channel for that? So, that's what I did and that's where those are at. There is a Facebook group for that. I am going to be deleting the Facebook group for daily reading with NIV shortly um, because I think doing the daily Bible readings with Jane will cover any version of the Bible that we choose to read. And I enjoy reading the Bible. I'm getting more out of it each time that I do read it. You learn a little bit more. Um, you get a little closer to the Holy Spirit, and that is my aim for myself, was for something that is more spiritual for me. Okay, that is it for that portion of it. Um, some of the things that I am planning, like I said, for this year are a few more tutorials. 
working on some designs that I've had in my mind. I am also going to be learning interlocking crochet and I will share some of those videos once I start doing that. Um, I'm choosing a two color for a very simple interlocking crochet project um, so that I can get that down first before I start doing some of the more complicated things that I would like to do. And um, I hope that you'll join me on this journey. The other thing is I do plan on starting the Tunisian Tuesday again, um, probably with a simple um, project. Like I said, I have found a baby jacket that I would like to do in Tunisian. You do need a double-ended hook for it. So um, uh, I don't know if I have one that size, so I've got to go look. Um, other than that, I'll be ordering a new, new hook for that project if I need to. All right, that's it for that. Are you ready for a, wad, a little wad in tarnation? This is probably not going to be a very long video simply because of that. What did I do with my wad in tarnation? Hang on, let me find it. Okay, got it. Cats knocked it under the chair. <laughs> okay, um, and also I will also include on the other channel the Bible reading plan that I am using. That way you can download it if you want. Okay, what in tarnation? Mysterious metal seats on New Jersey Beach believed to be from artificial reef. A set of rusted out metal seats that washed up on a New Jersey beach probably came loose from a rail car used to make an artificial reef, police said. Local resident Matthew Perry posted a series of videos to TikTok showing the row of four rusted out seats he found on the beach in Margate. Jacob theorized they might have been airplane seats from a crash, but Margate Police Department said they appear to have a far less tragic origin. The seats are far too heavy to have come from anything like a plane, Margate Police Chief Matthew Hankinson told New Jersey.com. Investigators said they believe the seats came loose from a rail car that was dropped into the water to create the Point Lookout artificial reef along the southern shore of Long Island. I didn't know that there was an artificial reef there. The seats are stripped down to the metal with nothing left for, from cushions, seat belts, or buckles that would indicate they came from a plane crash, Police Lieutenant Joe Scullion said. A detective did further research and found the decommissioned rail car seats are typically stripped down to the metal parts and taken out to sea and dumped to help build artificial reefs. Well, that's interesting to know. Many bears. Ec wildlife experts stumped by unusually tiny bear cub in Arizona. Wildlife experts in Arizona said they are stumped by an abnormally small bear cub that weighs just 15 pounds that's nearly a year old, but seems perfectly healthy. The Arizona Wildlife Park said on social media that the cub was rescued from a Tucson neighborhood last week. But experts at the park in Arizona Game and Fish were shocked by the bear's small size. The little bear weighs just 15 pounds despite being nearly a year old. Bear cubs in the United States are all born close to January or February, so this little fella should be up around 70 pounds this time of year. Arizona Game and Fish spokesman Mark Hart said the state experts are equally stunned. The bear weighs 15 pounds. A 15 pound bear should be about four or five months old. The math doesn't work. Hart said the department is equally stumped by the mystery of the bear's origin. It got separated from its mother, regardless of why in the back country. How did a bear that small get all the way off the mountain? We would have a thought that a bear that size would have been picked off by a predator, a coyote, a mountain lion, or even another bear. Said the cub also appears perfectly comfortable around humans. We'll never know the whole story, but if someone illegally fed this cub for months, it could explain his comfort around humans. 
It might also explain why he is so small. The cub's elf-like stature and rescue so close to Christmas led the Arizona staff to name him Buddy. Buddy was introduced to the public for the first time Friday in a special quarantine area. Did you know there's a Christmas tree maze? I didn't. Christmas tea, Christmas tree maze on the island of Jersey might be the world's largest. A Christmas tree maze on the island of Jersey might be a new world record after being constructed from more than 800 recycled trees. Bino Rodriguez, organizer of Jersey Christmas Tree Experience at Howard Davis Park, said he found out the world record for the largest display of illuminated Christmas trees what is, was set at 797 in 2019, and he realized he had nearly as many trees. He reached out to businesses to export Christmas trees and took their leftover stock to push his maze to over 800 trees. Rodriguez said the maze started with trees from, British, from a British farm that were considered unsuitable to sell and were going to be shredded. The organizer said he is now hoping to get a Guinness World Record recognition for the maze. He said some of the trees will eventually become fertilizer at Howard Davis Park, while others will be donated to a local goat farm to become snacks for the animals. Aww. USDA, just in time for Christmas, cleared Santa's reindeer to enter and exit the United States. Santa Claus didn't have to worry about running afoul of the law for flying his reindeer into the United States after the animals were given clearance by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The USDA said its animal and animal, animal and plant health inspection service issued a transit permit Thursday to Mr. S. Nicholas Claus of the North Pole, a distributor with Gifts and Good Cheer, Inc. The department said the permit will allow Santa's sleigh pulling reindeer free passage in and out of the country between the hours of 6 p.m. December the 24th and 6 a.m. December the 25th. The USDA is delighted to grant Mr. Claus and his reindeer a special permit to enter the United States, ensuring a seamless journey for the joy they bring each holiday season. Jenny Lester Moffat, Under Secretary for Marketing and Regulatory Programs, said in a news release, We extend a warm welcome to Mr. Claus and rec recognize the vital role of U.S. milk and cookies in fueling his festive flight. Dr. Rosemary Sifford, the USDA's Chief Veterinary Officer and Santa's Reindeer, all passed, said Santa's Reindeer all passed the required health inspections. At a recent inspection, the reindeer were found to be healthy and able to prance and paw with each hoof, she said. The health certificate did list a minor physical anomaly for one reindeer, Rudolph. However, APHIS indicated that Rudolph's red nose, while bright, was normal for him and not a concern, said the USDA. And there is no link to that story, but I really wish there were. All right, lions not on the loose in Nashville or Indy, despite the viral post. Zoos in Nashville and Indianapolis assured the public that no lions are on the loose, despite two viral Facebook posts using the same photo. The first Facebook post, accompanied by a photo of a male lion and a female lion, stated, escaped from the Nashville Zoo yesterday. They were caught on camera at 2 a.m. on a trail cam near Percy Priest. We are aware of the situation. A guy on Facebook made a false post claiming the two lions escaped Nashville Zoo. This is an incredibly false information. We do not, we do not even have lions in our care here at the Nashville Zoo. A second post from a different account used the same picture making a similar claim. Escaped from the Indianapolis Zoo this evening, they were caught on camera at 6.37 p.m. on a trail cam, along, trail cam along the White River. The Indianapolis Zoo confirmed this too was false. All of our animals are safe and sound, Emily Garrett, Director of Public Relations for the Indianapolis Zoo, told Indy Star. 
The Indianapolis Zoo has not had a male lion in residence since 2018. The photos used in both date back to 2015, taken by a wildlife camera in Hului, South Africa. The photo was shared online by conservation group Wildlife Act. And there's a video. You know, I've told you in my past that um, I have camped at the uh, Crater of Diamond State Park. And we even went looking for diamonds, never found any. However, there is a new diamond that has been found. A 4.87 carat, nearly colorless diamond found at the Crater of Diamonds in Arkansas. An Arkansas man who visited Crater of Diamonds State Park for the first time later discovered what he thought was a clear piece of glass was a 4.87 carat diamond. Jerry Evans of Lepanto said he had only been at the park in Murphy's Burrow when he'd picked up what he thought was a clear piece of glass and pocketed it. I thought it might be a piece of glass. It was so clear. I really didn't know, he told Arkansas State Park's official. We were picking up everything thinking it was a diamond. A while after leaving the park, he decided to have the object examined by the Gemological Institute of America just to make sure. A few weeks later, he received word that what he thought was glass was actually a 4.87 carat diamond that was nearly completely colorless. When they called and told me it was real, I was tickled to death, he said. He later contacted Crater Diamond State Park to register his find. While I get many emails from people wanting me to identify something they found here, to my recollect recollection, this is the first time someone has contacted me after they had a diamond identified by the GIA. Um, Assistant Park Superintendent Wayman Cox said in a news release, I'm glad that Mr. Evans was able to bring his historic diamond back to the park to have it officially registered. Park officials said Evans Diamond was the largest found at the former mine since a 9.07 carat brown diamond was unearthed in 2020. And there is video of the diamond. <clears throat> this next story is very heartwarming. And the video as well. Engagement ring lost at a rest stop returned by a stranger. A woman who left her engagement ring at a rest stop bathroom was reuni reunited with the precious item a little more than a day later thanks to a stranger and a Facebook post. Bailey Davis said she was on her way back to work at a car auction in Columbus, Ohio when she stopped at a Gallia County rest stop a little afternoon. Davis said she already was in the Columbus area when she realized she had left her ring at the rest stop and turned around. But when she arrived where she had left the ring, it was gone. Cody Warren had visited the rest stop a short time after Davis and used the single family bathroom because the men's room was being cleaned. He found the ring on a shelf and attempted to find its owner, but ended up taking it with him when he couldn't find any attendant working at the rest stop. Warren said he thought the ring was costume jewelry, jewelry and had spent the day on the dashboard of his work truck before being stowed in a cabinet at his home later that night. The next day, Warren came upon Davis's Facebook post about her lost ring, which had been shared numerous times. He called the number in the post and gave Davis the good news. Warren declined Davis's offer of a $1,000 reward, saying, doing a good deed was enough reward. And that's sweet. You never know what you're going to find at the thrift store. $3.99 thrift store vase auctioned for over $107,000. A glaze vase, vase purchased for $3.99 from a Goodwill store in Virginia was auctioned off for over $107,000 when it was found to be designed by Carlo Scarpa for famed Italian company Vanini in 1942. Jessica Vincent of Richmond, Virginia said she and her partner 
or visiting their local Goodwill store, something they do multiple times a week, when the red and seafoam green vase stood out to her. People tell me I have a good eye, she said to CNN. You can put me in an aisle with a bunch of dollar store stuff and I can pick out the one item with a little bit of value. She bought the vase for $3.99 took it home, where she took some photos of the face and its writing and insignia to share online. Members of her glassware Facebook soon identified the pieces coming from Scarpa's Penalate series when he released while serving as a creative director of Vanini. The identification was verified by the Chicago-based Wright Auction House and was valued at thirty to fifty thousand dollars. It ended up fetching a high bid of one hundred and seven thousand dollars from a European collector. Vincent took home about eighty-three thousand five hundred dollars from the sale, while the auction house received about twenty-three thousand six hundred dollars. Vincent said the money will allow her to fix up a farmhouse she built in January. She said she was glad to find the vase a good home. I knew I wanted to get it back into the art world. They didn't know it existed, she told the New York Times. I feel like I saved it from obscurity. And indeed, she did do that. All right. Are you ready for our devotional? All right. Comes from promises from God's heart. Promises from God's heart for comfort. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. The Lord is near the brokenhearted. He saves those crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction. Through the comfort we ourselves receive from God, for as the suffering of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ our comfort also overflows. And that's 2 Corinthians 1, 3-5. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And that should be easily recognized. Psalm 23, verse 4. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Psalm 29, 11. And the last one. Because of the Lord's gracious love, we are not consumed, since his compassions never end. They are new every morning. Mercies every morning. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. All right, and that is it for today's devotional and for today's video. I will see you again soon. I do have a few more things coming up. Um, so I hope you will come back and visit me. And, you know, I never say this enough. In fact, I very rarely say it, but... If you enjoyed this video, enjoy more of the things that I share, please like, subscribe, and share it. All right, guys, remember, be kind to one another, love one another, and for goodness sake, get out there and see this big, beautiful world we live in. I'll see you again soon. Bye.